HTC has been regarded the best of the best when it comes to build quality in the Android market, bringing a unibody metal design to a market of plastic always turned heads. However, the competition has since stepped up their game. So with the same formula as the past couple of years, can HTC make it in a heated smartphone market of 2015? Let's find out. I'm Ben with iTech Triad and this is our full review of the HTC One M9. When it comes to hardware and design, HTC put out yet another gorgeous smartphone, but with one flaw. It's nearly identical to their previous efforts. While the M8 changed just enough from the M7 to be different, the M9 looks just like the M8 but with a different camera. Sure, it is still a beautiful phone, but it's just the same basic casing for the third year in a row. One area where the M9 still shines bright, however, is in the speakers. The HTC One M9 continues the tradition of stellar front-facing speakers, and they are just as good as ever. Take a listen. As for the display, the HTC One M9 rocks a 5-inch 1080p panel, which is very good. I've never really noticed the difference between it and a Quad HD panel. The colors are good, the viewing angles are very nice as well, and with the display on the M9, there's really not much to complain about. Now out of the box, the M9 runs Android 5.0 Lollipop with HTC's own Sense 7 skin on top. The skin looks very similar to past iterations with the handful of refinements. It's as fast and as smooth as ever before, but even with the speed, Sense simply looks outdated in a world of material design. That said, one of the additions to Sense 7 I particularly enjoyed was the theming engine. Now it's not the most extensive out on a smartphone today, but it gets the job done and it provides users with a one-click theme with ease. Performance on the M9 was as expected. The Snapdragon 810 inside gives plenty of performance for gaming and the interface is super fast and super smooth. But let me take a moment to talk about something. The HTC One M9 does not overheat. Does it get warm? Sure. But here's the thing, just about every phone ever has done that. In my use of the HTC One M9, overheating was the least of my worries and it should be the least of your worries as well. When it comes to the battery life, the HTC One M9 followed the apparent trend. It's not very good. Getting a full day of use isn't too hard, but only if you're a moderate user. Now another disappointing area of the M9 was the camera. While HTC has finally moved away from using ultra pixels, they've really not gained much ground. The M9 has a 20 megapixel rear camera and, well, it's okay, I guess. For the most part, outdoor shots are fairly solid, but take away a bit of light or add a bit of movement to your shot and you're not in for a very fun time. The M9 definitely doesn't compare to anything like what you've seen on the LG G4 or the Galaxy S6, and if you want to see a comparison of all three of these phones, you can check out the link in the description for full-size photos from each phone. When all is said and done, the HTC One M9 is far from a bad phone. In fact, it's a pretty good one. However, it doesn't really feel like HTC was trying this year. The M9 is an on-par phone, competing with devices that many have called phenomenal. Simply put, the HTC One M9 is the least exciting flagship so far in 2015, and it's also the hardest to recommend. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up our review of the HTC One M9. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment letting us know your thoughts on the HTC One M9. Also be sure to check out our written review of the M9, which goes a bit more in depth on the phone as well as including some full resolution camera samples. You can find a link to that in the description below. Last but not least, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more tech content just like this. And as always, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.